Hello and welcome to the next in your series of video lectures. Today we are going to talk about the consummate project manager and how that project manager needs to go beyond actual management and become a project leader and the qualities of a good project leader. We're going to go beyond project management in this one. We're going to talk about qualities that a good project manager has to have in order to be a good leader. Qualities such as emotional intelligence, qualities such as good communication skills, be respected by their peers, uh, be respected by their subordinates, and actually be respected by upper management also. So we are going to talk about all about leadership and project management. At the end, again, you, there are four discussion questions. Please make sure that you answer those discussion questions and you turn them into me on Monday. Two to three pages, not per discussion question again, but two to three pages uh, total. And with that, let's get on to leadership and project management. So as we talked about in the introduction to the video, we're going to talk about leadership and the project management and the project manager. Leadership really is defined here as the ability to inspire confidence, to inspire support, and to organize and be effective in achieving organizational goals. Project management is all about being a leader, not a manager, but a leader. Project managers have to be looked up by their two by their subordinates, by their peers, and by their managers. Project managers need to make sure that they go out and they get the resources. In order to do that, they need to be trusted by upper managers. Project managers actually have to lead people to bring projects to conclusions. And in order to do that, they're going to need help and support from their peers and support from their subordinates. So they have to lead those people. They can't manage. They can't dictate. They can't be autocratic. They really have to be a coach. They really have to be somebody that uh, the subordinates and the peers and the managers or the aspirants respect because that's the only way things are going to get done. Remember, a project leader or a project manager, people have to want to do work for them. When someone is managing a project or becomes the project manager, remember, people have been taken out of their jobs and given new roles and responsibilities in order to be on the project team. Oftentimes, those new roles and responsibilities come in addition to what they're already doing. So now they have more on their plate. Oftentimes, people aren't sitting around not doing anything at work. They're busy. They're very busy people. And now they've just gotten more work to take on in order to bring this project to fruition or to close. So in order to do that, they've got to take an active role. Project leaders need to make sure that they understand that. They need to understand that these project managers or these project uh, people, the people working on the project, are taking on now more responsibilities and want to have to and have to want to work for the project leader versus um, just doing it because they're forced to. So again, project management, leadership is extraordinarily intensive. Leaders versus managers, well, oftentimes, and tons and tons and tons of stuff have been written. Peter Drucker has done a lot of work on leaders versus managers. And lots of things have been written on what makes an effective leader versus what makes an effective land, uh, manager. But the book here describes exchange of purpose, the right to say no, accountability, and absolute honesty. And I think one of the key things here is the absolute honesty. Leaders need to make sure that they're honest with people. They've got to sometimes deliver the bad news, and they've got to deliver it honestly. Leaders also have to be accountable. The buck stops here. Project managers, the buck stops with that manager. It is their job to bring the project to a close, to a successful close. 
So they can't pass blame. They need to take on the responsibility of bringing that project to close. They also have to have a right to say no. Oftentimes there are conflicts within project teams. A good leader needs to make sure that they manage those conflicts. Now, some conflict can be healthy. And oftentimes, project leaders, project managers, like to spurn some conflict between the project team. If there's conflict, that means people are engaged. That means people care. If there's no conflict, well, then people have checked out. But project managers need to make sure that they manage that conflict, and sometimes they have to say no, and sometimes they have to make a tough decision. All of those are important when it comes to being a project manager versus a project leader. So I really like this figure, and I think it goes to what I've been trying to say in the last couple of slides, uh, the difference between project managers and between leaders. Leaders do the right thing. Managers do things right. I like that. Leaders do the right thing, managers do things right. It's beyond just doing things right. It's doing the right thing. It's doing the right thing for your project team. It's doing the right thing for the people's careers in your project team. It's making sure that they get noticed. It's making sure that the people within the team are uh, celebrated so that their careers can flourish, etc. It's not the leader or the manager, the project manager, taking all the credit. It's, it's passing credit throughout. It's being innovative versus being administrative. It's being able to originate versus imitate. And it's also being able to command respect instead of demanding respect. You know, we talk about power in organizational behavior, and, and that's a key key thought in organizational behavior. But we, we talk about power. We talk about legitimate power, and we talked about all types of, of different power. By virtue of being a manager, you have power. Subordinates have to do what you've, you said. Regardless of whether they respect you or not, because you're in that role, you demand respect. You demand authority. People have to follow you. With a leader, though, they command respect. People want to follow, follow them. Think about managers that you've had in the past, managers that have been good managers and managers that have been bad managers. The good managers you wanted to follow. The bad managers you've had to follow. A good leader has a focus on people versus on a focus on a system. A good leader wants their people to succeed and a manager wants the project to succeed. I think that's also a key distinction. A good leader wants their people to succeed. And a good manager wants the project to succeed. Now, yes, a leader wants both. They want the project to succeed, but that project they know will succeed if their people will succeed. And they focus on those people and the project's potential versus on the bottom line. They focus on moving those people and having those people grow with the project versus being just part of the project. And I think this slide right here goes to a lot of key things and key differences between a project manager and a project leader. See, project leaders or project managers are many CEOs. Remember, they're managing many people from different functional excellences, but they're not really managing them. They're leading people from different functional excellences. Project managers have projects teams that are made up of finance people, accountants, production people, oftentimes human resources, oftentimes made up of customers and suppliers themselves. All of those people are from different functional excellences, just like a CEO. A CEO manages people from accounting, from marketing, from production, etc. So being able to manage different functionals and be able to bow to the power, as I call it, 
And that's a key term. Being able to bow to the power is also a key leadership quality that project managers have to set, have to have. The finance person is part of that team because they bring skills that that project manager don't have, doesn't have. So when those skills are needed, those project that project manager needs to rely on those people. They need to bow to that power and have those people bring out those skills in order to make that project team successful. So a project leader, a project manager needs to understand when to push and when to be pushed. And that's key, and that's kind of like a mini CEO. Project managers acquire resources and project resources. And the key thing about a project manager is they need to be able to motivate. Remember, these project team members are taking on more responsibilities. They already had a job, and now they've got a new job and a new role, and oftentimes comes with more responsibility and more things to do. Oftentimes, when people start a project team, they grumble because now there's just one more thing that they've got to do. A good project leader, a good project manager will motivate these people to make sure that they want to do it and they're doing a good job of it. And then finally, a pro good project leader also has a good vision and they're able to fight fires. They're able to be able to manage conflicts, etc. And as I've said this probably every time we've gotten together, and I've said this on just about every video lecture, and I'll continue to say it throughout the semester, a key thing that a project leader and a project manager needs to do is communicate. They need to communicate to their team. They need to communicate to their team's managers. They need to communicate to all of the stakeholders. We talked about stakeholders last time in the video lecture. And they need to be able to communicate very, very well. And all of that is part of a project leader and a project manager. And that's how a project manager leads. They don't lead just because they're the manager. They lead because they're good at it and people follow, not just because they're the manager. People follow because they want to. So one of the key things that a project manager has to do is acquire resources. Oftentimes projects are underfund, underfunded for a variety of reasons. They have vague goals. People don't believe in the goals. There's a lack of support. Um, there's a not invented here, N-I-H type of thing where someone says, if it's not my idea, it's not a good idea. And oftentimes, sometimes with VPs, their egos can get in the way. And they can think that a project that's being done, maybe in their area, um, someone is trying to uh, trying to uh, uh, challenge their power, and they bristle and they get very upset about those types of things. So, a project leader has to acquire the resources and then manage those resources, especially managing those top resources, to make sure that that is um, not looked upon as a bad thing. Um, sometimes projects are underfund, underfunded and, and a project manager or project leader needs to acquire resources because the requirements are understated. People think, oh, this is an easy project. We only need these particular resources or these particular skill sets, when in fact they need many, many skill sets beyond that. And again, there's distrust between managers. A lot of people, um, I use the phrase calling their baby ugly, where someone is working within their department. They might be saying that, hey, my department is fine. Go work someplace else. You know, you're trying to tell me that my department isn't run well. My department isn't run smoothly. You're calling my baby ugly. When they're not doing that, they're just trying to make it better or they're trying to drive more results for the organization. So egos oftentimes get in the way of project managers. Egos get in the or not project managers, but of VPs and, and other managers. And a project manager has to lead and tiptoe through all of those different challenges as they acquire resources and as they lead the project. So once the resources have been acquired, then 
and, and excuse me, I lost my place there for a minute. Once, uh, once the resources have been acquired, now the project manager or project leader needs to make sure that they hold team meetings or project meetings. The purpose of the meetings is to, one, report on progress so far, assign action items, make sure that people are on the same page with regards to the project description and the objective of the project, and also make sure that people understand everybody's role within the project. Team meetings define project and team players, and they also define roles and responsibilities. Team meetings are also good for um, giving action items and reporting out action items from before uh, from the previous meeting. They help with stakeholder communication. They provide visibility for project managers with the project team, etc., etc. A good project leader holds good meetings. The meetings should start on time. The meetings should end on time. If it's an hour meeting, it should take an hour. People should come to a meeting prepared. The project leader needs to make sure that they have an agenda for the meeting previous and send out the agenda for the meeting previous to when the meeting starts. That way people can pre come prepared and know what to talk about. Project leaders also make, need to make sure that they hold meeting notes and take meeting notes and also send meeting notes out after the meeting so that everybody can review them and also send out notes prior to the next meeting so that people can review the action items to make sure that their action items are done. The other thing that a project leader needs to do is understand who needs to come to the meetings. Not every single project team member needs to come to every single meeting. If they don't have an action item or if they're not involved in that particular stage of the project, then there's no sense in them coming to the meeting. So determining who comes to the meeting and the purpose of the meeting is really key. Holding a good meeting is a key to project management success and also to project success in itself. We talked about communication. We've been talking about communication a lot. Communication is absolutely critical for a project manager, not only to communicate to their team, but also to communicate to the stakeholders, etc. They need to structure a process for communication. They need to stimulate the communication. They need to make sure that people who um, need to be communicated to are communicated to, and not just sending them notes, because you don't know whether people are going to read the notes or not. So you can't communicate just by sending notes. You have to communicate by face-to-face -face communication or by email or something like that to make sure that the person you're communicating to responds to you and understands what you're trying to say then. They need to summarize what's going on so far in the project. They need to make sure that their communication is effective and the person they're communicating with or the people they're communicating with understand and have access to the information which you're trying to commit, commit or communicate to. Communication is probably the most important thing a project manager or project leader can do. And I've stressed this time and time again. Um, and the thing about it is, and we talk about this in organizational behavior too, and, and I mentioned this also with culture in the last video lecture, but you know, human beings are, are one of the very only people on this planet or only animals on this planet that can communicate effectively with one another. The problem is, is we don't. Project leaders, a good project leader, is an effective communicator. So they communicate specific outcomes and they communicate specific behaviors. They communicate the behavior for supporting, for harmonizing, for setting standards, for um, setting expectations, analyzing the process so far, keeping the peace, making sure that the conflicts are resolved. All of those are part of a communication that project leaders have to do. Again, I said this before, in a project team, conflict is very, very healthy. There needs to be conflict. That means people are engaged and people are trying and 
people have opinions about what's going on. But gatekeeping and making sure that that conflict management is part of the communication process and is part of the job of a project manager. So it's important, it's actually critical that project managers are good communicators because they can do that. They can regulate behavior, they can resolve process problems. The other thing that part of the communication that a project manager needs to do is they need to also make sure that they deliver the bad news. If someone's not completing their action items on time, the project manager or project leader needs to communicate with that person to find out why and to motivate them to uh, complete their action items on time. Remember, project management is all about doing action items and completing action items. If somebody is not pulling their weight, it's part of the communication process that a project leader needs to do. So, characteristics of an effective project manager, they lead by the exa example. If they want action items to be completed, they got to make sure they complete their action items on time also. They have a vision. They can see what the project is going to look like six months from now. They can see what the end result is. They're decisive. They're not wishy-washy. They get their job done. They're good communicators. We've talked about that. They're good at setting standards, and they're good at uh, setting roles and responsibilities. They motivate. Remember, these project team members, they have other jobs to do besides this. Project leaders and project managers need to motivate them to get their job done on time and in uh, a timely manner. They need to stand up to management when necessary. If they have a good vision and they know where they're going, even if managers want to maybe increase the scope or do something like that, they need to stand up to them and say, no, here's the way it's going to be. Again, they're visionaries. They also need to encourage new ideas and they also listen, need to listen to new ideas. I brought a term out a couple of slides ago called not invented here, NIH. Oftentimes people will take exception to new ideas if they're not their new ideas. A good project leader has vision and can understand when there's a good idea and a new idea and a new vision for the project, even when that vision wasn't his or hers. Characteristics of project managers who are not leaders, well, they set bad examples. They don't complete their action items on time. They're not good communicators. They don't have good agendas. They don't hold good project meetings. They laugh lack self-confidence, they're wishy-washy, they can't stand up to managers, uh, they get pulled in every direction, and they're not very good organizers, and they're poor motivators. Um, sometimes this is due to organizational factors. Maybe the person's just not a good leader. Maybe they're just not good suited for a, to be a project manager. Not everybody can manage a project. A lot of people can work on a project, but not everybody can manage a project. It takes a certain type of person to do that. Management, human resources, need to understand what characteristics it is that, that needs to take on a good project management role. The other organizational factors can be inconsistent reward or too many things. If a project manager is leading too many projects, well, they're pulled in too many directions and maybe they don't have time. They don't have the resources. They don't have the particular, and I hate to say this, but the particular bandwidth to get it done because they're leading too many prep projects. Or <clears throat> maybe there's insufficient reward. Maybe there's just another thing for the project manager to do. And because there's nothing at the end of the rainbow, so to speak, there's no motivation for them to do it. So all of these things on this slide you can see are characteristics of project managers who are not good leaders, characteristics of project managers who um, fail. And uh, one of the key things, again, is making sure that you're a good motivator and a good communicator. So that brings me to a concept of emotional intelligence. This is a concept that we talk about a lot in organizational behavior also. Emotional intelligence is being able to understand your own emotions, 
By understanding your own emotions, you can control those emotions. Emotional intelligence is not an easy thing. It's not, uh, sometimes people know when they're getting angry, but they can't control the fact that they're getting angry. Some people know that um, they're getting sad or they're feeling down, but they can't control that emotion. Emotional intelligence refers to the leader's ability to understand their emotion and then control that emotion. Um, I liken it to a customer service representative. A customer service representative, I've always said this, has to have an extraordinary strong emotional intelligence. Because remember, they get calls from people, and these calls oftentimes are complaints. And sometimes these callers are very angry, and they yell at the uh, customer service person, etc. Well, when that customer service person hangs up, and they take on a new call, they can't bring that last call into that new call, because they can't treat that new customer like the old customer, or they can't let the old customer affect them treating the way they treat the new customer. That's emotional intelligence. It's the same thing with a project leader. If something happens right before a project team meeting that might anger the uh, project manager or make, make the project manager feel down or something like that, they can't bring that into that project meeting. They need to be able to understand their emotions and not wear their emotions on their sleeve. They need to be able to understand that emotion and let the last emotion go so that they can't, they don't show that emotion to their project team. So they need to be self-aware, as you can see down on the left-hand slide. They need to be self-regulated. They need to be motivated. They need to show some empathy. They need to have excellent social skills and they need to be able to stop. They need to be able to stop themselves from feeling angry. They need to be able to stop themselves from feeling down or something like that. So a good project leader understands emotional intelligence and has a strong emotional intelligence and then can shift those emotions, emotions when need be. They need to be able to make sure that they don't bring maybe problems at home into the project team meeting or problems at work, other problems at work into the project team meeting. And I know it's kind of an easy concept, but it's a really difficult thing to do for a lot of these project managers. And that's what separates a good project manager from a good project leader. So that brings us to other traits of effective project leaders. One study said that credibility was a key trait for project leaders. They needed to be creative in their problem solving. They had to understand and have a tolerance for ambiguity. They need to be able to manage the fact that they don't know what's coming next. They also need to be able to manage the fact that there's variables in all projects and there are things that you can't foresee coming. There's things that are going to stall the project or maybe derail the project for a little bit because you can't see them coming. So they need to be able to understand ambiguity and have a tolerance for that. They needed to be flexible in their management style because remember they're managing a lot of people from different functional excellences. And they're managing a lot of different people that are motivated and, and, and respond to management differently. And then finally, as I have said over and over and over and over again, we need to have effective communication skills. The other abilities that they need to have is organizational abilities. They need to be able to understand and be very, very organized. They also need to also have an understanding of the organization in itself. Understand what the goals of the organization are so that their projects and their, they can manage a project to those goals of the organization. They need to be very productive. They need to be very creative. They need to be cooperative. They need to be integrative. All those types of abilities that a project manager has. As I said a couple of slides ago, not everybody can manage a project. Project management is a skill set that can be taught, 
But I think there are also some inherent qualities in a person, like organizational skill qualities, some inherent and, and emotional intelligence and those types of things. There's some inherent skills in a person. And then other skills can be taught that makes people good and effective project managers. So now let's turn our, our attention to project champions. Project champions are not project managers. Cha Project champions are those people that project managers rely on to help them get resources, help them communicate. Project champions, generally speaking, are those that are championing the project. They're sponsoring the project. They're making sure that uh, the project manager has everything that he or she needs to do to get the project. So oftentimes, let's say a um, if it's in the marketing uh, field, let's say it's a new product development project, a champion might be the director of marketing because they need to see that that project is done. Maybe there's a, um, a project over in finance and the champion might be the director of finance because they need to see it done. So champions can be project originators. They can come up with the project. They can be entrepreneurs. They can be people who think about um, what projects need to come up, etc. So project managers, generally speaking, are not champions. Champions are the people that are the sponsors. They're kind of like the producer in the movie, whereas the director is the project manager. The champion is the producer, the one that puts up the money or gets the resources and makes sure that the project or the movie is done on time. So a typical champion role is to have technical, their, their traditional duties are to have technical responsibilities, have leadership, be able to go and get resources, be able to coordinate, have control to ob obtain resources, as I, like I said, and also be administrative. They oftentimes need to be the ones that are uh, running roadblock or, or opening roadblocks for the project manager. They're cheerleaders, they're visionaries, they're politicians because they can go and they can get resources in a very politically astute way. They're ambassadors. They can go from one area to another area. They can be the liaison between finance, between marketing, between production, human resources, et cetera, et cetera. So as managers, we need to create project champions. We need to identify and encourage project champions. Um, a good project champion is going to, a good project champion is going to drive project completion. So we need to encourage those that are risk takers to become project champions. We need to make sure that the project champions have an emotional com connection, not only to the project, but also the project team. And also we got to make sure the project champions are freed from traditional project management duties so that they can um, not have any conflict of interest there. So, so four competencies to determine a project leader's uh, success. Number one is practice appreciation. Number two, Remind people what's important, what is the key things, and also, also, excuse me, also lead for what's important. Generate trust, and then also align with the leader and align with the champion. Project management in international settings, now that goes beyond not just the culture that we talked about in the last thing, not just the project manager's uh, leadership skills, but also cultural skills. They need to understand the environment in which they are managing the project. They need to understand the political environment, the cultural environment. They need to make sure they don't stereotype. They also need to make sure that they do the right thing. Again, um, in some international environments, especially with project management, bribery, in some countries, bribery is a way of doing business. We know that bribery is not uh, legal 
and um, it's not tolerated in the United States. So we need to make sure that, again, we do the right things. We need to be interested and we need to respect their culture as long as the cultural aspects are not um, something that are against our legal aspects or our, or our company uh, policies. Good international project managers don't assume that their way is the best way, and they use local talent in order to help them with the culture. They listen actively and empathetically. So project managers, and we're going to start wrapping this up soon, but project managers really are professional. Project work is a standard for many organizations, and many of the project managers are the most professional of the organizations. Many organizations upgrade people's skills to become project managers. They train, they recruit heavily, and they manage uh, people to become project managers. And project managers are dedicated career paths, and they move up and throughout the organization, and eventually they become managers, directors, and vice presidents also. So creating the project manager, is really taking a look at personalities and skill sets, developing training programs, developing good rewarding systems, and also identifying career paths. So again, here's your summary. I'm not going to read this to you. Obviously, you've read it uh, or can read it. The other thing is this. Remember that Chapter 4 is not just this video lecture. Make sure that you read Chapter 4 in the book and understand the Chapter 4 in the book. You'll be tested on both what's in the chapter, in the book, and also what has been presented on this slide. Some more of the summary here. After this next summary slide, again, there will be discussion questions. Please answer the discussion questions. Turn them in to me on Monday. Here are the aforementioned discussion questions. If you need, please put the video on pause so that you have these and you can answer these. Until then, I look forward to seeing you all again on Monday night, and take care.